Well, if I'm going to talk about Iron Man, I might as well get straight to it and just go straight in with Robert Downey Jr. is just the perfect Tony Stark. He is the likeable arsehole. I think what makes him so perfect is that Downey Jr. can add his own personal experience into the character. You know, there was a time when Downey Jr. was like in the limelight of the public and the media in such a negative way. And I believe, you know, he's he's used that and he's used that to create such a believable and natural performance. Because he did hit rock bottom and his career was in so much danger, his dedication shines through. Yes, he is playing an arrogant character, but in no way do I see an arrogant performance. It can be so easily done, the, the line is so thin. And I think it is a skill to be a likeable arsehole. I believe Tony Stark is such a challenging character, but Robert Downey Jr. has just, he's got the skills. I really love the character of Tony Stark, but at the end of the day, he is just a human being who happens to be a superhero. He doesn't rely on a superpower, but his technology. And this adds such a vulnerability to the character, which Downey Jr. pulls off well whilst being a likeable asshole. <laughs> More importantly though, he can carry a film. He has such screen presence. So who do you cast to play against him and not be overshadowed? Jeff Bridges, of course. A time when we could actually understand what Jeff Bridges was saying. These two have such big screen presences that they just happen to complement each other so well on screen. And again, there could be a danger of having two big screen presences just kind of fight each other to the point where no one's shining. And it just works so well in this film. And thank you for the film Wimbledon. <laughs> Who would have thought anyone would ever say that line? As this is where John Favreau and Paul Bettany first worked together. Therefore, we have Bettany as the voice of Jarvis. It's who you know in Hollywood. It's who you know everywhere, to be honest. Easiest money Paul Bettany has ever made. <laughs> John Favreau knows how to pick his actors as I just couldn't imagine hearing anyone else's voice in the role of Jarvis. John Favreau, that guy from Friends. <laughs> That is how I grew up knowing him. That is how I knew John Favreau. He was the guy, he was Monica's boyfriend in Friends. Uh, but John Favreau, the director of Elf. He made this. The dude from Friends and the director of Elf made this work of art. Marvel do owe a lot to Favreau, I believe. Uh, this is one of the best Marvel movies and I really don't think anything's ever going to top it either in future movies to come. They have got a long line, they've got a huge list, but I think Iron Man will always be right up at the top. It is one of my favourites and I say that in a sense of a favourite movie as well because I think this works brilliantly as a standalone movie. Being the first in phase one, it concentrates on Iron Man. Iron Man alone, rather than the Marvel Universe and setting up the Avengers. And this was Stan Winston's last film, someone who I deeply admire. The man and the studio he built was just, uh, he's just an artistic genius. And the suits in this film are just extraordinary. Just so intricate and just the level of detail is just true craftsmanship. It is that element that really gives the film a true sense of realism rather than being another make-believe comic book movie. It's just grounded. It really is with uh, just the artistic approach, the acting, the direction. All of it is grounded to make such an amazing movie. This film has something to say too. It has a really important commentary on weaponry and war just wrapped up constantly in this comic book movie. Thanks for watching. Be on the lookout for other reviews of mine from the MCU. Like the video and don't forget to comment with your thoughts and feelings on the film in the box below. Thunder!